Welcome to the Even Better Podcast, where your host, Seneca Waugh of Your Clear Next Step, brings you exciting content about making communities better by helping people get even better at work. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. This is Seneca Wall with the Even Better Podcast. We're so delighted that you're joining us today. This is part of our ongoing mission at Your Clear Next Step to help people have even better work days so that we can continue to create even better communities. I am delighted to be here today with our guest, April King. April, thank you so much for joining us today. It's awesome to be here. I appreciate being asked to join you today. This is such a joy. I have had the recent delight to get to know April. We've been working together for just a couple of months in her role at American Enterprise Group. It has just been such a delight to get to know her as her in her role as the Director of Employee Engagement and Development. And those conversations where we've been working together on some cool projects and cool uh, development opportunities in the organization, I just realized right away that there were some cool things that I see April bringing to the table around growth and around moving forward and around making the world a better place right where you are and continuing to invest in yourself and invest in your own growth and your own development. And I see her living this out in her own life, as well as encouraging that in the people around her. And so I said, April, April, will you come be on the podcast with us? And so you are in for a treat. It has been so fun. Every conversation that I've had with April, I have left more energized and more enthused and more excited for whatever comes next. So you are in for a treat to have this conversation with April. Let me tell you a little bit about April based on what I know about her. I know that she has a history in a space with a global beauty brand. I know that she has some, she's worked with some really, really cool people who have some great stories to tell in the sales space. I know that she has worked in training and development and learning and development. And I know that right now, now she lives and works in central Iowa and that she's got a heart for giving back to communities. So with that, April, tell us a little bit more about you. Wow. Thanks, Seneca. You might know more about me than I know about <laughs> me, but yes, it's true. Uh, I currently work in the learning and development space and also in employee engagement. So I feel like I am living my dream every day, which is, uh, which is a really cool place to be. As far as giving back to the community, I have a big heart for local nonprofits. I have a huge heart for giving back to the environment. I work for a global beauty brand, as you mentioned, that was built around sustainability. So I'm very passionate about that. I'm very passionate about teaching business curriculum through junior achievement to some area youth. And I also have been involved, and now I'll, I'll date myself here, since 1998 with Children's Cancer Connection, which then was called the Heart Connection. So those are some passion projects I have when I'm not uh, living my dream at work. Neat. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for, for that heart for service and, and for, for showing up at in your workplace and bringing that there and then also being willing to, to share this story. So we're here today talking about five ways to expand a learning mindset. So these are the, the five topics you're sharing with us today is five ways to expand a learning mindset. So let's back up just a little bit and talk about what, what do you mean by a learning mindset? So I live in HR, right? That's where my role is. And in this daily evolving world that we all live in, but in HR, we are consistently seeing terms come up like quiet quitting, work-life integration, autonomy, psychological safety, diversity, equity, and inclusion, environmental, social governance, brain health, generational workforces, meeting uh, the needs of retirees reentering the workforce, right? the great resignation, realignment, retention, and really all of these things are so important, but they're also always evolving. So I like to say that regardless of where your wins or your struggles fall right now, that there's one thing that remains true on any of these topics or anything else that we don't even know about yet, is that we too need to keep evolving, growing, and changing. And really what satisfies us today might not meet the needs of tomorrow. And that looks like both personal and professional, right? So as we evolve, 
whether that's something as, as simple as our musical taste. We're probably not listening to the same music we listened to 20 years ago. Maybe we are. Maybe it's our social habits have changed or if it's the way we were. Evolution, in, in my mind, all comes down to learning. Learning something different, something new, something exciting, something scary. And how we learn looks different to each of us. But I do have some suggestions for how we can tap in to how we learn. Oh, fantastic. So I'm reminded as, as you're talking about this, the one of the, the books that I've been reading and that I teach when I teach the course at Central College in the sec- spring semester, I teach the entrepreneurial mindset. And one of the texts that we, that we teach is Adam Grant's Think Again. And the whole idea of that learning mindset, that willingness to think about things differently, to, to keep learning, to keep thinking about it again, to, to, to keep learning what, what I thought before may not be what I think today because I'm I gotta I keep getting exposed to new information. I learn new stuff. And and so this this whole idea that we gotta we just gotta keep learning. We just gotta keep that learning mindset. I love it. So okay, so how do we do that? You've got five tips for us. Five tips. So the first one that you have is a suggestion to seek out new ways to learn. Unpack that for us a little bit. What is it? What do you mean by seek out new ways to learn? Well, that might seem like an obvious choice, right? Learn differently than we've learned before, but we live in this hyper-stimulated world. We have everything at our fingertips. And that overstimulation, in my opinion, can be used for good or it can be used for evil, right? Um, I like to use it for great. So I think we've all heard the saying, you know, readers are leaders. And I do. I love a good book. I'm a huge Adam Grant fan. If you could all see my desk right now, you would be amazed at how many half-read books I'm in the middle of. But I honor that that's not for everyone. And it's actually kind of exclusive to people who enjoy reading and are, and are great at learning in that capacity. So to be more inclusive, I would say, in addition to books, we have what we're doing right now. There are so many great podcasts, including this one. Can You can do a podcast while you're exercising, right? That's one area where it's okay to multitask. Uh, There are TED Talks, so many great videos out there. There are TEDx events in many major cities. Des Moines doesn't have one this year, but we did last year uh, based on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Great way to learn something new. There are documentaries that are plentiful, right? And at at our fingertips at any given time. For me, I know Eventbrite was a huge resource in 2020 and and into early 2021 to help me find networking groups and resources to connect on just about any topic that I wanted to learn more about. And it was a very inclusive environment. Everyone was there to learn and to discuss around the set topic, right? So another benefit that rose from 2020 was just the opportunity to learn more. There, there was more opportunity to learn online, more complimentary, even college courses, especially surrounding like CEI or, or social topics. So I just think like there's so many ways to learn. Don't limit yourself or don't think I can't be a leader. Or I can't grow because I'm not the best reader. Or I don't get enjoyment out of that. There's just so many opportunities now. So I guess that's kind of what I mean by learn a new way, pick up, pick up a, a new habit there. Yeah. Try, try something else, right? Try, try a new way of learning. I love it. I love it. It doesn't have to be the old way. Fantastic. Okay. So your second one, five ways to expand a learning mindset. I, and I was thinking about ways to learn. There's the whole idea of connecting with other people, right? Learning from others, which I think is going to tangentially move into your second topic here, which is collaborate. So when you say collaborate, what do you mean? Yeah, so I briefly talked about networking, right, through Eventbrite and different groups. And certainly, we've learned over the last few years that work arrangements are flexible. So collaboration does look different than it did a few years ago, but it's still just as special. I am an in-person person. I like to talk to people. I understand that not everyone feels that way. Sometimes that's uncomfortable for people. And we've gotten so good at looking through a camera now. To connect. And I think that's very valuable too. Think about how many contacts you have in your cell phone right now or in your email, right? Possibly hundreds. Some people might have thousands. I doubt anyone says I have 10 contacts in my phone right now, right? So think about that amount. If we could gain one great idea from every 
20 people, by every 30 people, every 50 people, if you're someone who has thousands, if you can gain one great thought or consideration, something that maybe doesn't even live in you right now, right? How much more knowledge would you have? Tap into your current connections, your current resources. I love networking. I love meeting new people. If you don't, that's okay. Who can you collaborate with and learn from? And I, I also think collaboration in the workforce can look formal or informal. So I want to talk about that a little bit. And Seneca, I know you've helped at American Enterprise Group with our mentoring kickoff for this year, and, and it's, it's going great. We have 41 participants, and that's very good for an organization of our size. But I also think that informal mentorships are valuable outside of those 41 people. So that can look like the usual things we expect to see in our day-to-day -day work life. But I also am a big fan of talk to someone you haven't talked to. Ask questions like, what's working well for you? Or what's working great in your world? And also hard-hitting question, what isn't? So when I say collaboration, I mean tap into your network of people that you have yet to meet or people that you know. As a mother of two young children, I learn things every day from them. <laughs> now, some things I don't know are useful in my toolbox. Some things are just background noise, but they teach me how to be a, a better human, how to be a better person. And so I, I just think, gosh, if I can gain all these insights from a 10 and 8-year-old every day, Think about all the knowledge that comes with the contact that I already have. Absolutely. I was thinking about your the, the whole idea there of collaboration. And when I was serving on a professional association board of directors, the, the volunteerism, right? Volunteerism is cool. It's a, it's a great way to, to collaborate. And I know that being part of that board was, was fun and it was fulfilling. But the best part, like the, the way that I grew the most was in the collaboration that I did with my fellow volunteers, right? Well, we would get together and we would have these ideas and we would hash them out and the, the things that we would learn and, and hearing from someone else saying, oh, I would do it this way if I had that problem or, oh yeah, I encountered this challenge and, and I tackled it that way. And I'd be thinking, oh gosh, I wouldn't have thought to do it that way. That would have, what a great and novel suggestion or we would tackle something together and, and together we would come up with even better ideas than any one of us could individually that collaboration, man, I, I think we were so much better together collaborating. That was, that was the most, I'm sure we got good stuff done for our professional association and, and that was great. And, and, and we networked and, and we had a, a good infrastructure for future career opportunities, but man, the stuff we learned by simply working alongside each other was so cool. Yeah. Everybody has a, a toolbox and some are very full, some are overflowing and I think when we can share those ideas out, it just makes us, it makes us stronger. It makes us stronger professionally, but we learn things that we don't even know that we don't know. It's great. Collaboration is my favorite. I love it. I love it. Okay. So if you are just listening in, we are here with April King and we are talking about five ways to expand a learning mindset. We're moving on to number three. So you got to pause and you got to rewind, go back to the beginning. We have talked about seeking out new ways to learn, collaborating, and we're on to number three, which is to get a hobby. Oh, April, tell us about that. Well, it sounds funny when you say it like that, right? Just get a hobby. Get a hobby. Um, but, but it's true, right? The habit of staying curious is important. And something you can do that can spark your brain is to get a hobby, right? And many of us cannot think back to being a small child or a toddler, right? I know for me, it's a little too far in the rear view mirror to seem relevant. But toddlers learn to do new things because they're curious, right? They want to try something different. Everyone else is walking. Why can't I do that? And we don't really change that as we grow but we do change our creativity surrounding the curiosity, right? We get a little bit in our box and our comfort zone and we get really good at the things that we're really good at. And we might say, you know, I always kind of wanted to golf, but I tried it once and it was embarrassing and I don't need to go back out on that golf course ever again. We get a little too comfortable in what we're good at and we can try to hone that. So if we've always enjoyed reading, or we've always enjoyed playing golf, we're going to continue to enjoy those things, and we should. But what hobby can we pick up that we aren't necessarily good at? Or maybe we will be good at it, but we're not experienced at it. We've never tried, right? So I am a big fan of learning new things 
outside of the office that can reignite energy towards bringing something new into the office. I, I, there is research behind this. This is not just my opinion, but I am a huge believer that this brings true. So anything from small steps to big leaps. If you enjoy baking, challenge yourself to learning how to cook because, and I don't do either, but I've heard their different skills, right? <laughs> or get extreme, get crazy, right? Take salsa with the food lessons, volunteer. I, that word's going to come up a few times as we talk. Digging into your genealogy, right? What can you do outside of your, your work or your office space that can trigger something in your brain? Because we know that if we are stimulating our brain to continue growing, that it, that it translates into the work world. So getting a hobby. I'm a fan. I encourage everyone to do it. I, I just think it's, it's a fun way to grow. It can be a frustrating way to grow, but uh, it should end up being pretty enjoyable. Oh my goodness. What fun. And as I'm, as I'm thinking about the practical applications here, one of the thoughts that's coming to mind are the, the number of folks that I'm working with who are at the, the transition point in their career. They've been working for a bit <laughs> and are ready to transition to something else. And for those folks who have had nothing but their career for so long, if you don't have another hobby or you don't have another interest and you are transitioning into that, that dreaded R word of retirement and you literally have nothing else that interests you, that sudden startup of a hobby can be really, really daunting. But the others, just, just this last weekend, we spent some time with dear friends who have phenomenal interests and phenomenal hobbies, including, you know, gardening and, and golf and baking and volunteerism that when their, their transition went into retirement, they're like, well, thank goodness I have time now to do all these hobbies that I know all of these things about gardening. And, and I know all of these things about baking and I know all of these things about volunteerism. And now I can dedicate time, more time to these things. And their, their brains had been fully activated and, and they'd gotten curious on these spaces that during their working lives, that now in, in their transition to retirement, they just have more time to dedicate to those. Man, I can see that practical application both for the working world as well as then for those who are starting to think about that transition to what's what's next after after I, I'm not giving a 40 hour work week or 60 hour or you know however many hours your work week happens to include these days. Yeah, absolutely. You're tickling your brain either way, right? And it's very important. We know anyone who's had aging parents or have known someone who is, is aging out of the workforce knows that that, that person doesn't want to stay stagnant. They don't want to stay at home. You worry about aging parents getting lonely and, and a hobby is a great way to, to interact with other people too. And, and that's a good, it's a good networking tool. Absolutely. Expand a learning mindset. I, I love it. Get a hobby. Why not? Get a hobby. Okay. Get a hobby. Just go get a hobby. And and I love your challenge, April, to to not just do. It, it, it was so so funny that you would cite reading. And reading is one of my hobbies. I I delight in reading, and and I'm I'm. I always will, right? I'm very good at reading. I can pick up a book. I mean, I got to use stronger glasses now than I used to, but uh, I can, I will always delight in that. But getting a hobby that I'm not as good at, right? That's going to be a bit of a struggle that to, to exercise that learning mindset. That's really, really lovely. Thank you. All right. So let's move on to number four. Well, we're talking about five ways to expand a learning mindset. And number four is to keep an open feedback loop. Ooh, that sounds uncomfortable. It can be really uncomfortable for some people, but there is huge growth <laughs> in keeping an open give and receive. It's a two-sided feedback loop. So I am a huge fan of soliciting honest feedback on my work. I encourage others to do that, but it's hard, right? It can be a real challenge to ask for feedback on our work. And if, if we receive feedback that isn't great, it is so easy. We are human and it's so easy to brush off feedback as, well, it's just their opinion. And opposite of that, some of us hone in on one thing that said someone could give you, you could have a performance review with 20 great Accolades. It could be over the top and all the things you've accomplished, but one area of improvement and we can't let go of it. 
we, we hyper obsess on it, right? It's a singular piece of feedback that can, that can defeat us. And that just depends on the person, obviously. But you have to work on it. You have to work on this open feedback loop becoming more comfortable, like anything else we do, right? So soliciting and providing feedback often, I think it's key to creating trust and building relationships, right? But also, we, we should be analyzing feedback that we get to help us to learn and to grow. That's the whole point. You know, you've heard that old adage, feedback is a gift. Not everyone feels that way, right? And, and I, I understand that. But the trick here, at least for me, it's worked quite well, is, is to remember that if you're asking for feedback, right, you're kind of in the driver's seat a little bit. You're saying, tell me your honest opinion on this. If you're asking for it, you can give yourself permission to take feedback at face value, right? To not make up excuses for why this person said this or not go down that rabbit hole, but really take things at face value so that you can really focus in, listen to the feedback, and take actionable steps off of it. If you're focused on what's really being said, and not focus on responding to feedback, you can grow exponentially. It expands your learning mindset beyond, again, we don't know what we don't know, but sometimes other people know things about us that are beneficial for us to, to take action on. So I always encourage everyone to solicit feedback, ask for it, put yourself in the driver's seat if it makes you uncomfortable to hear feedback by saying, Seneca, what can I be doing better right now? And listening with the intent to hear what you're telling me, I, I just grew. I just grew and I asked for it. So you're, you're, you're not being brutal. You're telling me what I asked for, right? And I always encourage to just stepping out of, out of the content for a day, right? If something feels hurtful or it feels tough, just stepping out of it for, for a day or for a minute and then revisiting it and seeing um, if there's if there's learning or growth opportunities there. Yep, beautiful. So our feedback classes that I, I teach, uh, we call it giving and receiving the gift of feedback, right? It's it's how to give it, uh, wrap it as a gift and how to receive it as a gift. I do fully believe that feedback is a gift and sometimes it's not wrapped as a gift. So we got to remember if we're giving it, we got to wrap it as a gift and, and we got to remember to receive it as a gift, even if it, even if the other person didn't wrap it that way. But to your, to your point about the, the driver's seat, one, one of the things I remind myself sometimes is the point that, you know, blind spots are blind spots because I can't see them. Right. They, they, <laughs> if, if it wasn't a blind spot, I could see it but I can't see it. That's why it's a blind spot. And I do have to rely on others. That, that open feedback loop does allow me to get access to my blind spots. They are specifically my blind spots because I can't see them. And the only way to get them is, is to ask. I, I need help seeing those. I, I, I don't have eyes in the back of my head. I can't I can't see them without help. And so that, that learning mindset, expanding that, asking asking for help and being willing to say, yep, this person sees something from a different angle than I do. And I simply can't see it from that angle because I'm, I'm, I don't have eyes over there. I'm, I'm blind to that spot. Absolutely. Could I share a personal example in, oh, the, in the realm of being vulnerable? Oh, right? please do. Yeah, I would love to. So I am a fairly enthusiastic person. I don't know if that comes through in my voice. It certainly comes through in person and on a, a Zoom screen. I talk with my hands. I'm a big personality. And that's always served me well. It has, right? I, I can easily connect with others. I've been accused of being, you know, the, the happiest person people know. And, and I've always been thought, yeah, that's my superpower. That's my gift. And I think it's, it's part of my superpower. However, I was soliciting feedback from coworkers, right? And some were at a higher level in the organization than myself, some were at a lateral level, and some whom reported up through me. And one of the pieces of feedback that came out of this kind of a 360 review of my work was that I came off as inauthentic at times because no one is that happy. And that was painful feedback. That was probably the most hurtful feedback in the moment, right? The snap moment when I heard it, because I thought, 
I'm not being an authentic. I'm really a happy person. This is who I am. So I had to step out of that situation. But when I did, what I realized was that my energy needed to match my audience, right? If you're always high, high energy, then it's hard to make an important point when that energy needs to be brought in because you're already living in that space. And it served me better than always being high energy. It, it served my exhaustion level, being able to meet people where they were at. But also, I think that it has shown more vulnerability in the workplace. That, you know, I, I was never, if I asked how your day was and you said it's not great, I always would have said, would you like to talk more about that? I, I wouldn't be you know, super hyper or trying to bring someone into this great mood. However, just listening without smiling sometimes made people understand that I heard. They're, they're, in a, they're in a hard place, right? And if I'm always smiling, sometimes it's like, what are you smiling at? I just told you I'm struggling. So that was a very valuable piece of feedback that I got to hone my energy to match my audience. It, it served me better than, than being amped up all the time. Yeah. Oh, April, thank you for sharing that. And it's like, it was a, a spot that you couldn't see on your own, right? You, and, and it wasn't, it wasn't, my guess is that feedback was not shared to be hurtful. It was shared to help you grow. And it gave you an opportunity to learn and to, to see a different perspective that now you can continue to, to keep growing. Okay. How can I show up even better in, in the next space, right? So it continued to expand your learning mindset. So you can keep soaking in, in your various environments. How can I adjust to this space to be even better in this space? Absolutely. Wow. Oh, wonderful. Almost, oh, this is so cool. Okay. So five ways, again, if you are just listening, if you're just dialing in, you have got to go back to the beginning because this is just so wonderful. We are here with April King and we're learning five ways to expand a learning mindset. And we've got to keep expanding. We've got to keep growing. We've got to keep learning. If we're not learning, if we're not growing, we're not we're, we're dying, right? If we, we've got to keep growing, we've got to keep learning. So five ways to expand your learning mindset. Seek out new ways to learn was the first one. Collaborate was the second one. Get a hobby was the, the third one. And don't cheat. Don't do a hobby you're already good at. Get a hobby that stretches you a little bit. Keep an open feedback loop. Just a wonderful personal anecdote in there from April. And, and I think April, you've already shared an example of, of getting uncomfortable, but this fifth one is pretty powerful here. Get, get uncomfortable. Oh, take us through that. Yes. Yeah. So to me, this is, this is the most important of the five when we're talking about developing or evolving in our learning mindset. And it's kind of encompassing of everything we've already talked about, right? And that is to get uncomfortable. Uh, there's rarely significant growth in what we already know. There can be improvement, right? But there's rarely this, this, this big area of growth in those things. You know, I always joke, if you've worn the same scratchy shirt your entire life, how do you know it's not comfortable? You, you get used to what you're used to, right? And I believe that the same applies in learning. If you do what you've always done, not only are you not learning anything new, but you're really not opening up your mind to the possibility of all of the things that you have left to learn. Right? You're, you're not at the, the peak of the mountain yet. None of us are. We're, we're living, we're human, we're evolving. So, you know, I said this earlier, I'm fairly outgoing, which leads everyone I interact with to say, you're an extrovert. You're an extrovert. When in reality, I prefer quiet. I like to be on when I'm on and I like to not be when I'm not. And it's a joke in my friend group that I'm intentionally unavailable. <laughs> I'm on when I'm on, and then I am just off the grid, right? But I do stretch, and I, I do make myself get uncomfortable because it's good for my growth. Mm -hmm. It's good for my socializing. It's great for my mental well-being, right? So even though I want to be a hermit, I am excited to turn into a pumpkin at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> I, I keep doing things that, that stretch me beyond that comfort level. So I do have recently uh, joined an executive board. And, and to be honest, I could doing a podcast is rather uncomfortable to me. It's something new and something that's getting me challenged to grow. And honestly, being uncomfortable excites me. And it doesn't excite everyone. 
but you have to kind of practice getting uncomfortable too, right? Because you have to kind of sit in your discomfort at times. I like to say at work, forget thinking outside of the box. What I believe we should be doing is recycling the box, reinventing the way we're thinking and learning, uh, taking something we have and doing origami on it, right? Restructuring things that get us uncomfortable. I, I think it's, it's very important in, in growing and adapting and again, changing and evolving. Yeah. I'm thinking about the application in learning here as you just made that connection. When you take a class or along the way, when we when we took quizzes or pop quizzes or exercises in class, right? In, in grade school or in high school or college even, the, the ones that we remember, right? The answers that stuck with us, they were not the answers that we got right. The ones that stuck with us were the ones that were uncomfortable because we got them wrong or that we had to rack our brain with because we weren't sure, right? That it was, it was the ones that stretched us, the ones that were uncomfortable or, or that we, we took that and then we didn't, they, they made us check them in class or we weren't sure. And then they came back and said, no, 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 this is really the right way. It was, we were uncomfortable because we didn't have the right answer. And then it stuck when we realized that we didn't know that discomfort, I think was part of what made it stick when we had to stretch a little and we had to learn it didn't come easy to us wasn't that part of the learning along the way absolutely i will never forget my second grade spelling bee when i was up against the third graders and i was feeling very proud of my spelling skills and then i got the word business and i mixed up the i and the s that still resonates with me and i've never spelled the word wrong since Second grade, right? That's far in my rear view mirror. So 100 percent that's accurate. Yep. It's it's the things that make us uncomfortable that that cause us to learn and that they cause us to stick. So I, I love that idea of let let's let's get uncomfortable in in our various spaces. Let, let's not just hang out in our comfort zones. Let's let's stretch out of those a little. Right. Let's let's get uncomfortable and, and sit in that for a minute and see what we can learn in that space. Oh, I love it. What a great, so now I'm, now I'm stopping to think, okay, how am I going to get uncomfortable this week? I, it's Friday. It's, you know, it's Friday morning as we're having this conversation. So I, I've got a little bit of time yet this week, next week, at least, how am I going to get uncomfortable? How do we apply this? Oh, this is really cool. Thank you, April. This is great stuff. So can you give us any tactical examples, anything that you've done recently to get uncomfortable or things that you're applying at work or ways that you're seeing your friends or colleagues try this out, getting uncomfortable? Yeah. So in my own life, and I mentioned joining a board and doing a podcast, really connecting with people outside of my network. I'm very connected within my network. You know, those are some things we already talked about, but that can be a bit uncomfortable. I've been on a year of yes. I kind of, it's been longer than a year now, but in 2020, I really didn't say no to a lot, right? Because there were, I, I said no to in-person socialization. I said no to, you know, going, going to a normal grocery store. But what I didn't say no to was anytime someone wanted to connect. So because of that, I had a lot of Zoom meetings with people I'd never met from across the country that hey, your job title seems super interesting to me. I want to get into that space. Are you willing to share? I said, yes, that isn't necessarily where my comfort level lives, right? But it, it challenges us to grow differently. I work on a phenomenal team. We're a fairly small team and we always challenge each other to think differently, to get uncomfortable, to do something different. A specific example of that is one of my counterparts at work has taken on uh, kind of leading the charge on the volunteer committee at work and is heading up the United Way campaign. Not her area of comfort, hasn't been a huge passion project for her in the past. And so we challenged her. First off, I, I don't like to tell people where to spend their time, right? I, if you're going to volunteer, give back, do something that's meaningful to you. But I challenged her to find the meaning in that and to see if that's something that, that she wanted to head up. Uh, we all challenged each other. It wasn't me challenging her. She challenged herself. And she's, she's really finding this passion for running this United Way campaign. And I, I don't think that was in her mindset a year ago. But it's getting uncomfortable, growing, learning new things, doing something different. And, and she's doing a great job. 
So that would be another work success that I would share. Oh, thank you. Just looking for that. Thank you. That gave us a, a couple of examples. So as our listeners are thinking, okay, so how do I, how do I do that? How do I apply? Thank you for that. So this would not be the even better podcast if we didn't move on to our next question, which is, how about you, April? What's making you even better these days? Well, I'm going to give you probably an unpopular opinion answer. Um, I was on a work from home Zoom in October of 2020, so almost two years ago. And one of my coworkers said, I did leave it on my social media. And so I said, tell me a little bit more about that. Why, why would you do such a thing? And she said, it's just not helping me. It's not helping me. I'm not connecting. It's not meaningful. It's noise. And I said, well, I can delete all of my social media. And I, I think everyone thought, no, you can't. And so I did right after that meeting, with the exception of LinkedIn, because I need to network. I need to connect. I want to connect with people, but I deleted all of my social media accounts. So didn't just delete the app, deleted them. I went off the grid and it for me has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. I've been so much more present in my personal life at home with my family. I've been so much more, you know what? I, I realized it was not healthy for me when I would see children at Target. And the only time I'd ever seen those children was on Facebook. And I would be like, oh, there's little Susie. And, and I was like, that's not the way that is living my best, most authentic life. I'd rather talk to Susie's mom and say, hey, I'd love to meet your family sometime. It's been a long time since we've connected. Let's make that happen. I want to know what's going on in your life from you. So that's something that's really been serving me is making more genuine face-to-face -face connections instead of, instead of living through a social platform. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, April. Love it. Love it. So if you are a listener and you have just joined in, you missed some really great stuff. So you've got to go back to the beginning. It's time. We've been here talking with April King. She is at American Enterprise and American Enterprise Group, and she has been sharing with us five ways to expand a learning mindset. And there are just some really, really wonderful, wonderful concepts in here. So go back and listen to all five of them. Some great stories, some great tips, some great actionable things to help make your day even better. April, thank you so much for spending this time with us. I am so grateful. As am I. It's been wonderful. Thank you. And to all of our listeners, thanks so much for joining us. And on behalf of all of us at Your Clear Next Step, we hope the rest of your day is even better. Thank you for tuning in today. The Even Better Podcast will be back with more content soon. But in the meantime, subscribe to our podcast or check out our website at yourclearnextstep.com for more information. See you next episode.